Hey guys, James here. Um, just a brief video tutorial on how to use the uh, the Ruby on Rails environment that I set up using uh, Vagrant. This video, I'm uh, basically just going to go through the commands that you need to run in order to start up the IDE um, to create a uh, Ruby on Rails project and to be able to then access it through your browser. Um, I'll be pausing various parts of this recording just while the uh, um, the uh, bootstrap script runs and pulls down all the packages because that takes can take a while depending on on your internet connection. And just one other thing before you do go into this is that you might want to look at um, how to better provision the VM with some more um, resources because um, I think by default Vagrant um, doesn't allocate quite nearly enough and you'll see that when I do get into the VM and start trying to run commands. So um, just to get started, the uh, first thing you need to do is just, as per the Vagrant documentation, is run Vagrant up. Um, I'll just show you what I've got in this directory actually. Um, so I've got my Vagrant file with Bootstrap. I've got the um, Oracle JDK. So there's links for the JDK in the post. Um, if you're watching this directly through YouTube, just uh, um, check out the description. I've put the immediate information in there, but if you need more info, then head over to my blog. Um, then um, this one here, RubyMine, um, you'll need to grab RubyMine from the RubyMine website, just on a free trial, 30 day trial. Um, and then obviously the, the Vagrant file. Um, the other f the other items you can see here in the directory are um, created once we've got the VM running. So let's just do a Vagrant up. And I'm just going to pause the recording while this runs in the background. Okay, so that bootstrap script has finished running. Um, you might have noticed while running it that it did prompt you to um, abort or um, uh, res or, or say no to a app get install command. Um, if you just disregard those, the script will continue to run and it will finish up just fine. Um, I have put some um, dash y arguments on all of those commands, but it still comes up for one reason or another. So moving on, just open up uh, Putty and I've already got a profile set up, a session set up for this VM. Um, so you can just hit um, developer at 127001 on port um, 2222 and just drag that into my view it's going to look a little bit funny the password's just developer so that's all you got to do developer and developer um, you want to work out what IP address has been assigned um, in my case it looks like uh, 8 So we'll just go ahead and open up um, RDP. Now I just kind of started my video capture in a really small area and suddenly I need to use a lot of space, but we'll see what I can do with that. Um, just go ahead and connect, say yes. Um, just bring this into focus. We've got a prompt like this. So what we need to do is use the same credentials to log in, developer and um, developer. Um, it'll come up with this um, panel dialog, so just click use default config. And let's see here, we'll just get another shell running. Just maximize that. Get another shell happening here. Um, the one thing I found that I, could, I couldn't I could fix um, was setting up environment variables when you have a session through um, XRDP. Um, it uses some kind of other, it doesn't run um, .profile or .bashrc when you start up an XRDP. So you, you can't always initialize all your environment variables. So, I mean, I have Java installed in this environment, um, but obviously it doesn't, um, know where Java is. Uh, so to fix that, we just have to run a few commands in the shell. Uh, we're going to do um, Java home. 
num equals user lib jvm forward slash jdk one seven zero underscore twenty five. Just put an export at the start of that. Um, and then we want to just update the path. Software, which is where RubyMine was installed by the Bootstrap script. Let's go into there. instance I just want to evaluate for free for 30 days just accept okay start to load up RubyMine again I apologize for the, um, the whole uh, capture screen being just a bit small I don't think I can reconfigure it while I'm recording um, but these default settings are fine so I'll just click OK um, it might come up with this yeah it'll come up with this error that's fine, just click close, go create new project. And because we're using Vagrant, we typically want to keep the project in the Vagrant folder. Um, just create a new directory for this one. Um, obviously the um, developer user has sudo, so Studio, if you want, um, make the video tutorial. I don't know, don't know why you'd ever call it project video tutorial, but um, yep, whatever. So just refresh, and we've got a folder for our thingo. It's called video tutorial, and we want to make it a Rails application. Now, at this point, I'm just going to pause the recording because this usually takes a while. Uh, apologies for that. There is another dialog screen. In this case, you can leave the default settings and just click OK. Okay, so RubyMine has built a project for us. Um, you'll notice it does a, like a bundle install and um, does a bit of processing and then indexing. Um, once that's completed, you should be able to actually go in and you can see all of the um, artifacts that you would expect to be created for a new Ruby on Rails app. If we go ahead, we just do a run. Um, I'll just do this one. I'll just pull the IDE up a little bit so that you can see what's going on here. Can't get the console log to come up, but either way, it started up Webrick. Um, so just minimize this guy and refresh this page. <clears throat> you can see if I just drag this over here, our um, Ruby on Rails application is running on the um, on the VM and everything's all hunky dory. Um, obviously this this bootstrap script isn't, you know, polished or anything like that. A lot of it's you know the result of just constant tinkering. So if anyone sees any obvious improvements, let me know. Um, and if anyone goes to the effort of finding out how to correctly provision the vagrant VM, um, let me know. Um, I didn't have time to look at that particular side of it. But anyway, thank you for watching and Hope you're uh, hope you've got an environment rather quickly in which you can do some Ruby on Rails stuff. Anyway, thank you.